to love, but Denzi seems to have no trouble at all. Don, what a wonderful, exciting time those early naturalists must have had. All those beautiful new flowers and weird and wonderful animals that had never been seen by European eyes before. Of course, among the animals, it wasn't just wombats and kangaroos and koalas they found. Think of all the new insects. I think I would have been in my element then. There were actually about 250 different kinds of insect discovered during Cook's visit alone, and some of them were butterflies. But there was one butterfly that those early naturalists could never have discovered because it just wasn't here then. This beautiful butterfly discovered Australia all by itself about a hundred years after European settlement in Australia. Wanderer butterflies are native to America. They're called monarch butterflies over there, but our name is very appropriate because the ancestors of the Australian wanderers wandered very far indeed. They island hopped right across the Pacific Ocean until they reached Australia. after white settlement. The wanderer butterflies couldn't live here without the milkweeds because their caterpillars won't feed on anything else. They can't eat native Australian plants or any of our garden plants, just milkweeds. The milkweed plants give the butterflies protection against birds too. the milkweed seed pods, both kinds, the seeds are attached to little parachutes like dandelion seeds so they're easily dispersed about the countryside by the wind, like this. But a warning. If you get this milky stuff in your eyes, it can be very unpleasant, and some people can get a skin rash from handling the plant. So if you're cutting the stems or, or breaking them off, just be very careful. Thanks to the milkweed, here are these lovely butterflies well and truly at home in our gardens. And in this bicentennial year, Don, I suppose they're just about ready to celebrate their first 100 years as true blue, or should I say black and tan, Australians. <laughs>